Over the last few years, I've looked at and turned down a number of robotic lawnmowers, mainly because I need it to do two things. One is cut my grass in the paddock, which is about half an acre. So a small lawnmower isn't gonna cut the mustard. And two, the area in the paddock is complicated. There's all kinds of boundaries and bushes and islands that potentially a robotic lawnmower would need to find its way around. And that's why I finally settled on the Svea Vergen Blix. If you've been watching my main channel, you'll know that over the last few years, my paddock area is gradually evolving as I put down more grass and cut back bushes. And the last thing I want to have to do with a robot lawnmower is have to bury a cable around the perimeter so it knows where to cut. Because as my grass and my paddock changes, I've got a feeling I'm going to be digging that cable up every five minutes to change the shape of what I want it to cut. But this robot lawnmower claims that it doesn't need a perimeter cable because it works on something called LiDAR and vision technology to navigate around your lawn and avoid flower beds and obstacles. So today I'm gonna to set this up and get it cut in and answer one simple question, which is, is it worth buying? I'm told Sververken is a Swedish brand who specialize in industrial agricultural equipment, but now is in the robotic mowing and landscaping industry. This is one of their medium-sized mowers. And because I've got so many obstacles dotted around my paddock, I'm really interested in seeing whether this LiDAR system actually works or if it's just going to end up in a bush. And as my garden is a combination of paths, garden, paddock, and little narrow walkways, I'm sort of hoping it can navigate its way around. So there's only three components. That's the main unit and then this sort of little garage that comes in two parts. And it doesn't even get bolted together. We need to go outside and with these sort of plastic uh, screws, screw it into the ground. I haven't actually decided where this is going to live permanently yet. So I thought I'd just set it up outside my back door, relatively near to a power point. However, it comes with an extra extension lead of about 10 meters. So you don't have to be that close to an external socket to make it work. Setting this up to get the mower charge really only takes a minute or so, and you don't even really need to read the instructions. So I take off these two protectors of the prongs, which I assume charge the machine, and then just roll it in place, and it just connects onto them with a satisfying click. So this is the exciting bit to see if they talk to each other. I've just uploaded the app here, and there's a big button here that says Connect Mower. Let's see what this does, shall we? Set up charging station, yeah, next. Yeah, I'm sure that's all okay. Power on, solid green light, yep. Press the power button. When green light blinks, setup is complete. So there we are, job done, it's actually talking. No map yet, use joysticks to create a map. Oh, map lawn then, I suppose. How cool is this? It's like an arcade game. Now let's see, can we move it back? Oh my god. So setting up a zone for it to cut, I found to be really, really easy. All you do is walk it around the perimeter and then come back to where you started. It recognises that, you press a button, and that is your zone. Just a couple of points here. You can do it at three different speeds. So when things get a little bit complicated, I found putting it down to the lowest speed just helps a little bit. And when things are very straightforward, then putting it up to the high speed just gets the job done a bit quicker. There doesn't seem to be any limit on the number of zones that you can map out. So you can potentially map different parts of the garden and cut them completely independently. On purpose, I'm taking this through some pretty long grass that I haven't cut for quite some time, just to see whether it gets through it or not. But at the same time, for the first cut, I am starting with a fairly high cut just so it doesn't get too clogged up with this thick grass. I'm getting as close as I dare to, to any sort of edges, hoping that it will replicate where I put this machine in the future accurately, but we'll find out in a minute, I suppose. Before anyone says that my driving is a little bit all over the place, please remember I'm also holding a camera so you can see what I'm doing. It's not the easiest thing, I'm trying to do three things at the same time here. Yeah. 
So we're back to where we started. So that didn't take long, really, even though we've got quite a bit of area. Work, create work zone. Yep, I'm gonna have a bit of that. Oh, that looks a funny shape, doesn't it? With the area mapped out, there's a button on the app that says quick mow. So when I pressed it, we were off and cutting. Ironically, it really did start with the most difficult part of the garden. That's not only got long grass on it, but is hilly to say the least. However, the advertising for this machine does state it can cope with a 33 degree slope. So this would be an interesting test to see if it gets stuck in any of these areas. I don't know why I'm walking up and down with it at the moment. I think it's just because it's, it's in its first outing. I feel as if I should accompany the thing, to be honest with you. The first thing that's very obvious when it starts working is how quiet it is. From a couple of meters away, like I am now, it sort of hums a little bit, but like next door would no way realize I'm now cutting my grass. This is pretty tough terrain here, especially with all these leaves and the thick grass, which I haven't cut for a number of weeks. Before long, it started mowing the main bulk of the area with parallel passes backwards and forwards. And although the grass is wet and long in lots of areas, it just seemed to get on with the job. So I thought I might make it a bit more challenging. So the lawnmower is just in the middle of its up and down here. And what I've done is I've just put a Lowe's bucket here, just in its way. I know it's in its way, just to see what it's gonna do. It's coming. So it not only avoids it, it does it in such a way that it sort of gets back on its track as well. Like, you can sit there, but I'm just gonna go around you and keep doing my stuff. Oh, it's coming back again. We might have another collision avoidance. Oh, this time it's gone around the other side. Then it just goes back to where it was originally supposed to be and just keeps cutting. If it does encounter any problems like this, it also takes a photo and sends you a notification so at least you know there's something wrong. I think the strategy for lawnmowers like this is to take a little off, but often. And from what I can see, that's exactly what it's doing. So as you can see from the app, it's now done around about 25%, but it's still got like over five hours to go because this is a fairly big area, which is good because I don't have to stand here actually supervising it. I'm gonna go in and have something to eat. Let this thing just carry on and do its stuff. And I might see it later. So this is just a couple of hours later. The nights are really drawing in now. So it's absolutely pitch black. And I'm just lighting this up with a torch just so I can get some light for the camera. And it's still merrily working away on its own. It's pretty damp now because, uh, well, it hasn't rained, but it's just like a lot of dews come down. It's nothing like being out in the garden in the middle of the night checking on your lawnmower, but it's still happily cutting away. So there you go. Just keep going. So I'm out early the next morning just to see how the Blix finished up last night. And so far, it's looking pretty good. Although I'm not expecting to see lines here, you can actually see some of the tracks and it looks pretty tidy actually. And this is where I told it to go up to and just leave all of this. And I can see where it went up to, which is exactly where I set it. You can see a line there that it's stopped all the way around the perimeter. And I just realized this little island of overgrown brambles here, I didn't actually put into the map. So it's avoided that just by using its LiDAR. Well, this is another island here, which I didn't program in. It's just a tree that's died this summer, but uh, it's successfully gone around it. It's managed to navigate this little narrow path here. And I saw it working around here yesterday, which is pretty nice. What's quite nice to see 
is all these lines here. You can see where it's gone up and down. I'm just taking a little bit off the lawn. It's looking pretty good. And it's even successfully come into this little corner. This is only about a metre wide here, but I told it to come in, go round and come back out again, which it's done. Because the lawn was really wet when it cut, I decided to give it a bit of a wash down with the hose, just to get as much wet grass off of it as possible. And then I just gave it a pat down with some paper towel. So what did I think about my first experience with a robotic mower? Well, I'm pretty impressed to be honest with you. Everything it said it was gonna do actually worked. And I'm always a little bit nervous about getting things to talk to apps and linking into the internet and all of that. But it just worked, no problem. The setup was an absolute breeze and I literally got cut in in 15 or 20 minutes. It would have been quicker if I wasn't filming as well. That LiDAR really worked around a couple of islands that I'd forgot to map. And although I had to set it on a fairly high cut because I haven't cut the paddock for the last couple of weeks, it didn't miss a beat. It went through some long grass a lot better than I thought it was going to. So I'm so pleased I've got this. It's really gonna help me cut that grass regularly, which isn't what I've been doing recently. And I think it's gonna make it into quite a nice lawn. I hope you enjoyed this review. I will see you next time.